Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today is Christmas in July, day five. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. For the next 25 days of this series of Christmas in July, I am sharing stories about myself and about developing as a medical coder. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy this candid look at my life and let's get started. All right, today I am talking about the very first time I was asked to give a class <laughs> uh, in medical coding for providers. So here we go. All right, oh, I was in my second position, right? Um, working as a medical coder. I was there, I had been there for a few months. I don't quite remember how long, but I had been there for a few months. And I was in my in my office area, uh, minding my own never mind, <laughs> when a provider comes in, and this provider was the chief resident, okay? So he was in charge of, you know, making sure that all of the residents got their education, and he had a few other duties as well, but education was one of his duties. <laughs> so he comes barreling in and he's like, which one of you is the coder for um, inpatient professional service rounds? And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> so if you don't know what that is, basically when a provider goes and rounds on a patient that is staying in a hospital, they have to get paid for their professional services. And so they may be staying inpatient and they may be a diabetic patient, with an orthopedic concern. So an orthopedic doctor will come in and um, do their care for this patient who is under the care of another service. And so this orthopedic doctor has to get paid for their professional services. So that is what I do. <laughs> That's where I come in. So I was the coder for in patient professional services. And so that's why I was like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, okay, good. He goes, um, we need a class from you about how to do uh, evaluation and management. What we need is somebody to explain to us these bullet points and why do we need these? Keep in mind, <laughs> this was clear back in um, 08, <laughs> 2008. So I was like, okay, uh, yeah, sure, no problem. And he's like, good, um, we'll, we'll see you on Wednesday. Well, this was a Friday that he come barreling in like that. So I had a few days to think about what I was gonna say. <laughs> And uh, they had their class time on Wednesday. So I was like, all right. I said, cool, no problem. And so then he left and I was like, okay, what do I do now? Well, my supervisor was out on leave um, that week. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna be my own show then. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but I'm gonna have to figure it out. So I was like, okay, how do I explain evaluation and management to doctors? You know, how do I, how do, I do this? And I didn't know how many people were going to be in this class. Okay, let's just keep that in mind, right? He just told me where to go and he told me to be there at nine o'clock. So I was like, okay, I could do that. So I started thinking about all the things that I had seen that I knew that they struggled on in their notes. And so I was like, okay, um, because the, the residents would write the notes and then um, the attendings would take over the note and, and that kind of thing. So that's how they were learning. So I was like, okay, well, and then I started to break down, okay, history, review of systems, physical exam, and assessment and plan. And this is what we need to cover for this. So I was like, all right, cool. So instead of, you know, making a slide deck, because I didn't know if I should make a slide deck or not, and he said that they wanted to be able to ask questions. So I was like, okay, let me just make a list for myself on points to cover. So I said I could do that. <laughs> now keep in mind, I had never done a class before like this. Uh, let alone for providers. I had done classes before in phone books. I taught people how to deliver phone books, <laughs> but I never taught providers how to document, you know, or how, what things that they needed. So I was like, okay. So Wednesday arrived and, you know, I, I make sure that I went and got a nice outfit. Um, I look very businessy. I think I was wearing, I, was, I had to have been wearing a dress because I don't, uh, wear slacks unless I can get them hemmed up <laughs> but uh, I was wearing a nice dress and I was like okay well, you know I'm ready to go and so I go and I show up this room was huge <laughs> I'm not kidding there was at least 60 residents in there and I was like oh my gosh what did I get myself into so I'm standing up there and I'm like <gasps> you know and so I go over to the chief resident and I'm like I, I didn't know it was going to be this many people. He's like, oh yeah, this are, these are all of our residents from all the services. I was like, 
oh, okay. <laughs> he goes, this is everybody that writes notes um, in this facility. I was like, oh, okay. And so I'm thinking to myself, don't panic, Blue. Don't panic. Don't panic. And I'm like, I've got all of this stuff written down. Um, I know what I'm going to say. I'm a very good speech giver. I can do that. I said, don't panic. And I'm sitting here having this internal dialogue. And meanwhile, I'm smiling like, oh, nothing's wrong. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, what did I get myself into? And so like, I started to relax. I was like, okay, the worst thing that can happen is you fall flat on your face, but then you're going to be embarrassed because you fell flat on your face. So I was like, okay. I was like, you want, I'm telling myself this. It's like, you want them to be interested in what you have to say. You want to be able to talk to them because I had talked to some of them here and there, but it's very, it was very like, okay, they're learning and they're doing all this other stuff. So, you know, it was never like how it is now for me uh, at the facility where I could just go and talk to people. They were kind of separated at the time. So I was like, okay. Um, so I said, okay, just breathe in, breathe out. It's like, no big deal. I said, you can do this. I'm telling myself this. You can do this. You can do this. And I was like, okay, cool. And so then the chief resident gets up there and he makes his introductions. He said, we have a very um, exciting guest today because uh, I know all of you have questions about evaluation and management. And you heard this collective groan <laughs> throughout the room. And um, he goes, hey, 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 come on, guys. And so they were all like laughing about it. And um, he goes, we have the coder here. Um, so she's going to be explaining some of the finer points of evaluation and management. And then he's like, go ahead. So um, I, I go up there <laughs> and I see a whole sea of faces and some of them look really bored. Some of them look really tired because they had just gotten out of a 24 uh, hour shift in the ER and this was their education time and they were gonna go home right after that. <laughs> but these doctors, especially in the residency, they get put through the ringer. They get put through like the rough times and they are physically hard on them because they're in the learning phase. So got to get them prepared. So I start going over the finer points of evaluation and management. And I'm starting to get some more like interest. And I see people writing notes and I see people like, you know, raising their hands to ask questions. So I'm like, okay, great. So there was like two people that asked questions. They had no problem asking questions. You could tell, right? So I was like, okay, good, you know? And so at the end of my spiel, I said, uh, does anybody have any questions? And then, then there's crickets. There was crickets. And I was like, okay, maybe I read the audience wrong. Maybe, maybe they didn't like what I had to say. Maybe they didn't understand. Maybe they were confused. And I was like, okay, well, um, I said, if anybody has any other questions, I said, my office is right around the hall and um, I, or right around the corner. And I'm in this room. I can't remember what room I'm in. <laughs> but uh, I said, I'm in this room. And I said, so if you have any questions, let me know. You can always email me. And I gave them my email. And so they said, okay. They go, well, thank you. And then, um, and so he goes, all right, everybody's dismissed. <sighs> Everybody, I had like, all of a sudden, I was getting up to leave. And I had like this whole crowd around me. Oh, oh, Miss Blue, I have a question. I have a question. It was funny to hear them call me Miss Blue too. I was like, okay. <laughs> whatever <laughs> and these are people that are about my age okay so <laughs> they're like late 20s early 30s and so I was just like okay whatever Miss Blue whatever <laughs> and so they go well what about this what about this what about this so for the next 20 minutes I'm sitting here holding court with all these people I'm like where were these questions when I asked the problem was they didn't want to look stupid in front of certain people so after certain people had left and some people had left early because they were like actual like attendings so they got to leave so that's when the residents came around me because they felt safe enough to ask questions and not look stupid so i'm like are you freaking kidding me so i'm explaining these things and it's nice because they were all like paying attention and they were just like sitting there writing their notes and and they were like but if if what about this and what about this and so i was like okay i was explaining i said when you have this situation you do this when you have this situation it's like this so that's what was helping them. So I found in that experience that when you put yourself in a position to be able to be accessible to providers, that it's on a more comfortable level, like being one-on-one -on -one or being in a smaller group, it does pay off. And I just happened to be there and I didn't know he was going to dismiss the class right after I spoke. And so when I did, I was trying to make my way to the door and they just 
all around me. I couldn't, I couldn't move. I literally couldn't move. So I was like, okay. So I just talked to them afterward. They go, wow. They go, well, thank you. And they go, well, it's nice to meet you. I'm so glad we you know, got to meet you and things like that. So I was like, okay, cool. It's funny that in this audience though, in this audience was one provider who would uh, be at my facility that I'm at now, um, just a few months after I had gotten here. And he, he arrived to this facility too. And so <laughs> it was funny because he was in my class and that was the first time we met, right? And so you, you kind of get a feel for people's faces and I'm good with faces. Sometimes I'm really bad with names, but I recognize faces and his was a face that I could not forget <laughs> because he was there and he was one of those ones that, you know, he was asking questions at the end. So of course, everybody's got their name tags on. So that was how I realized I was like, okay, this doctor, you know, when I'm here now, right? I was like, that was a doctor from over there. <laughs> but yes, this doctor was the infamous Dr. X. And I will be talking about him more in this series because there are some funny stories that I have to share about him. Uh, but it was funny because coding is a small world, but so is hospital life, right? You start working in the hospital uh, pretty soon, <laughs> you'll run into doctors that you've worked with previously. So that's why it's always important to maintain your professionalism as much as you can. Um, always be accessible and always show your talent in the fact that you're there to support them, you're there to help them because you never know when you may run into that provider again. So uh, needless to say, the um, encounters started coming out a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more clearer. Um, and they said that this was good because they hadn't had this and when they're in medical school they don't get teaching <laughs> about coding they get a few things but it's not so much that you know it's actually a coder that's actually helping them to learn about like what it is that they need to document because doctors are not meant to be coders they're meant to document and they're meant to care for their patients and things like that so that was what was the difference between okay well <laughs> uh i know what i'm i know what i need to document versus i have no idea what i'm supposed to document but i expect to get high level credit out of this okay but if you're not documenting it <laughs> it didn't happen and that's what us as coders what we always say so uh but it was very nice it was a good class it was very successful my supervisor did hear about it and um, because Jessica had to go to those um, it's like a meeting with the business office and stuff and they told her they were very impressed with uh, my presentation they were glad that I was able to be there to you know give this class um, and that they hope that they can get more classes out of us and so that was a regular thing after that it was like all right so uh, every couple of weeks, we would all poke our head in and just see if anybody had any questions. So that was what opened up the dialogue. I actually got a letter of, um, of like recognition from the uh, chief of staff. So he was saying how wonderful um, I had worked and how wonderfully hard I had worked. I remember him saying that, that I worked wonderfully hard about you know, helping the residents to understand and that they really appreciate that. And it sets everyone up for success when there's good communication. So that sort of started the whole thing with me learning <laughs> how to uh, speak with providers and things like that. And I still have that letter. I put it actually in a frame and I thought about it. I just thought about it just now too. And so, but it's, it was so nice when you get um, recognized by the staff, like, okay, it's, we're learning. <laughs> and it's not just, oh, this is just a coder, you know, who cares what they say? No, it's not about who cares what they say. I'm your teammate. I'm here to work with you. So anyway, but that's my story. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for another story. <laughs> so I will see y'all on the next video. Please like, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this, I hope you'll share it. So see y'all next time. Bye.